So, um, one of the important things uh, uh, when we uh, have a patient with uh, the notion of microstability is to know how we will see the injury. This is very important to recognize the injury. Okay. That was the reason because uh, we decided to, uh, uh, to make a classification. So one of the points is that uh, micro-instability is a real uh, ankle mechanical instability. And uh, as you can see, symptoms are important at this moment for diagnosis. And also you have seen that the pressure on total fibrillar ligament tear, uh, tear of the superior uh, fascicle, is the problem. So how we can detect this? We have changed our classical classification of ankle instability. You can see this is a mechanical instability, functional instability, and from these two groups, nowadays we have the chronic ankle instability, we have lateral instability, medial instability, we can have a, a, a combination of both, we can have rotational instability, and nowadays we have micro instability. So, of course, if we have a micro instability, which is a mechanical instability, we have also the chronic instability, which is a measure of macro instability. So now we are talking about a lot of things uh, uh, when we talk about instability of the ankle. The second point is, uh, as you can see, as my colleague Claude uh, Monsignor uh, said, the current diagnosis of microstability is uh, is based on symptoms and the history of an ankle sprain one or more ankle sprains. And the, when, when you want to do the diagnosis, it is important to know first how is the anterior fibular ligament, how is anatomically the anterior fibular ligament, but the most important is how is the injury of the anterior fibular ligament, this superior fascicle. How we can see this superior fascicle when it's injured. For that reason, we uh, decided to do a research study and I revise, I personally revise more than 200 videos of patients with a diagnosis of microstability to know how was the injury and what concomitant injuries were around of this injury, of the injury of the anterior top fibular ligament. Because if we know how is, what characteristics has the uh, ligament injury, we will make easy its observation of uh, in uh, MRIs ordering or arthroscopic procedure. So we evaluate during this period of four years more than 200 surgical videos. Half of uh, the surgeries in that period was, uh, were diagnosed with a microstability of the ankle. You can see here the uh, mean age and all the characteristics of the group. First, as an ankle mechanical instability, secondary and particular uh, injuries are uh, very common. These are more or less all the uh, secondary problems. We observe uh, soft tissue impeachment or pathological uh, soft tissue impeachment in the anterior area in uh, more than 60% of the patients with the notion of microstability. That was the reason because in the past we say that this patient that has uh, uh, soft tissue impeachment and this was the problem but we actually know that this is not the truth. <clears throat> Osteochondral, chondral injury in more than 11% uh, of the patient with microinstability. That's very important because sometimes we treat the uh, chondral problem and we forget that the patient has a microinstability. Osteophytes, spurs in the anterior tibial rim is observing 10% of patients. Um, deltoid open, open book injury, which is a rotational instability, is observed in 10% uh, of patients with the diagnosis of microinstability, that is very important. You have to explore the deltoid ligament. Posterior impeachment, 10% of uh, patients, uh, close to 10% of patients with the microinstability diagnosis has Posterior problems has the posterior pain. And all the problems, for example, loose bodies, is in 4% uh, of uh, this group of patients. 
So, um, the main problem, problem is sometimes when you scope the ankle, you go to the lateral gutter and you don't know if, if the ligament is injured or not. When it's clearly injured, then you can see it, everybody can see it. When it's a partial tear, sometimes you can say, okay, maybe it's not injured. And that's why we decided to do this study. So you have to know that the superior anterior fibular ligament is uh, related with the inferior bundle of the anterior tibial fibular ligament, as you can see here, and both are intraticular structures. So then you can observe during your arthroscopy. This is the normal lateral artery, and you can see here, this is the distal fascicle tibial fibular ligament, and here on the floor of the lateral artery, you can see the anterior fibular ligament. As you can see which is not connected, but in continuity one to the other. This is the fibula, and here you have the lateral wall of the talus. And you can see in this patient, for example, this patient was a diagnosis of uh, uh, microinstability. And you can see this is different. We can see in this other patient, same, another patient with a microinstability problem. So this patient has a partial detachment. Or another patient with a, a complete detachment of the superior fascicle of the anterior ligament. So, here we have one patient with a complete resorption of the anterior fibular ligament, which is another of the problems. So, you, we can see here, this is the, the, the other video, I will try to stop here, for example. We can see here, distal tibial fibular ligament, anterior fibular ligament, uh, medial, uh, lateral malleolus is anterior facet, lateral wall, and we try to draw this, okay, more or less, I'm sorry, I'm not Picasso or, or Dali, but it's quite uh, close, okay, we can see here, anterior tibial fibular ligament, anterior tibial fibular ligament, talus, and the fibula. Yeah, it's clear? Uh, no, it's <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, this is the normal view, okay? So, the type 1 is patient that the ligament is not detached, but is injured, and is injured plus to its insertion. And we call this as a comma-shaped injury. This type, uh, this type of injury was observed in 8.2% of this group of patients. And you can see the mean age is the same, there's a big group. And you can see, observe some concomitant problems. You can see here one example. Looks like fine, a little bit lax, but you can see here in this insertional area, when I do this, you'll see. Okay, this is the real nice position, but we have here the injury, this is the common shape. It's like an injury inside the ligament. So, second type is a, a partial detachment, but is a medial partial detachment. And this is the most common injury that we will observe in patients with microinstability of the ankle. And you can see how concomitant problems are increasing if we compare with the type 1, with the other uh, uh, type of injury. And we can see here one of the patients, for example. The ligament looks okay, but it's a little bit separate from the bone. This is, its medial attachment is uh, uh, injured. This is type 2B. It's another partial detachment, but it's a proximal detachment. You can see it's only 15% of patients concomitant pathology is increasing if you compare with type 1. That means that probably uh, uh, instability is increasing. And you can see here, it's a proximal detachment. You can see this stump of the ligament, but it's not a completely detachment of the ligament because you 
have still some ligament there. So then we have completely detachment of the ligament. We can have a three, a type 3A, which is completely detachment, but medial detachment. That means that uh, the ligament is completely separate from the bone. It's a little bit more than 7% of patients. And you can see concomitant pathology is increasing and increasing uh, according to the type of, the, uh, of injury. And we can see here how it's absolutely separate from the bone. And you can see this is a ligament. And one of the uh, uh, funny things is that in some of these patients, you can observe this fever, which is the connecting fever that uh, Dr. Dormal explained before. So sometimes the connecting fever is not injured. I don't know if the, uh, we have to do a research study about this, but uh, uh, we don't know if uh, uh, everything changed if we injure or not these connecting fevers. Type 3B is the same, completely tear, but proximal tear. And then this is only 9% of patients. You see here concomitant pathology. Uh, concomitant problems are increasing and increasing. And you can see it here, it's a, a stump of the ligament, which is completely disinserted. And finally, type 4, that means the a ligament is, uh, uh, has disappeared, completely or partially disappeared. It's only 5% of patients, maybe to 6% of, uh, uh, of patients. Um, the most important characteristic for concomitant pathology is that this patient has a lot of uh, percentage of soft tissue impeachment of pathological tissue. And probably this pathological tissue has made uh, uh, something on the ligament and makes that the ligament disappear. And we can see here in this patient, we can see here the footprint area, and there is no ligament here. We only observe this that probably is the connecting fever, the connecting, uh, 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 yeah, the connecting fever, and we don't know why this fever is still here, but the truth is still here. So, in conclusion, <coughs> microinstability of the ankle is a mechanical or minor ankle instability, and as a mechanical instability has concomitant articular injuries, which is what are very common in patients with microinstability. The classification was according to the ligament injury characteristics. We uh, classified in four types, non-attachment injury, partial uh, injury, total injury, and uh, ligament resorption. And two subtypes depending on the uh, uh, attachment was medial or proximal uh, ligament attachment. And remember that the most common type is the partial or medial attachment, which is the 2A. And uh, more than half of our patients, or in my patients, have this kind of uh, uh, injury. Thank you for your attention.